Man, Trump's in trouble. White House officials are pissed. Biden's can't even be bothered. As our expenses continue to rise together with the decline of our incomes, it's pretty hard not to realize how badly our cash flow has been affected. More Americans continue to look up different ways to make money while a good chunk of people, they're leaning on their credit cards to buy their essentials at home. So how does President Biden tout Bidenomics when this is what's happening on the ground? Many voters think that this administration has ultimately done more bad than good for us. Because roughly 35% of voters disapprove of your economic policies. And mostly they're referring to inflation. Think of this, over the past 30 months, the level of consumer prices has gone up 16%, grocery prices up 20%, energy prices up 33%, and we're checking on the prices of Rehoboth Beach mansions for you, Mr. President. Want to make sure your uh, real estate wealth is intact. Gasoline was about $2 when you were elected. It did jump to 5 bucks nationwide. But it's running about 375 today. Just in case you wondered, sir, 375 is higher than two. And that's really your big problem. But, and this is the part that I actually lay out the truth here. It doesn't look as if the president has a big problem. Matter of fact, it feels as if nothing's wrong with his life right now. I mean, if you ask me, it's Americans who have big problems. But you know what? We'll get to what the president is up to these days, because if we're talking about huge problems, well, then I think I know someone who's leading the way in that department. So let's talk about the Department of Justice and how some critics say that they've had their crosshairs firmly planted on former President Donald Trump for quite some time now. Now, as you guys may have seen on TV and online, we've been bombarded with news of him receiving his third indictment. I mean, this thing is all over the news because it's unbelievable. Now, if we base it on paper right now, Trump looks to be the worst president this country has ever seen. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6th, 2021, was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. As described in the indictment, it was fueled by lies. Lies by the defendant targeted at obstructing a bedrock function of the U.S. government, the nation's process of collecting, counting, and certifying the results of the presidential election. In this case, my office will seek a speedy trial so that our evidence can be tested in court and judged by a jury of citizens. In the meantime, I must emphasize that the indictment is only an allegation and that the defendant must be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. Do you guys think that this is the case? The former president took to Truth Social to thank his supporters as he says that we are now seeing our country and its officials for what it is, a corrupt, scandalous failure that has turned the nation down a dangerous road. Now he says that with his help, and I'm guessing this is if he wins in 2024, that he, along with the American people, can make America greater than before. Trump's latest indictment was brought by special counsel Jack Smith as he's saying that the former president was engaged in a campaign of dishonesty, fraud, and deceit, all related to the riot back in January 6, 2021. The indictment also includes references to six co-conspirators who was unnamed, although there was a good chance that this list comprises of former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani, Attorney John Eastman, Sidney Powell, Jeffrey Clark, and Ken Cheesebro. Now, as for the sixth conspirator, it's still a toss-up between Michael Roman or Boris Epstein, and it's rumored that all of these people may be investigated for their role in the attempt to overthrow the election back in 2020. Now, as you can guess, not many Republicans are very happy with the apparent favoritism of Trump when it comes to indictments and Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, who, by the way, was so pissed off about it that he's suing the Department of Justice and is filing an FOIA request to get the records in connection to Trump's latest indictment. And he's not the only one who's fired up. The U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, he 
also spoke up and said that the Department of Justice is merely using the legal issues against Trump to allegedly distract the American people from noticing the information that House Republicans have stacked against the president and first son, Hunter Biden. And so this begs the question, are they keeping Trump on the news so that they don't have to talk about President Biden? I mean, we've heard some pretty damning stuff from Devin Archer, so I guess the timing's spot on here. Now, speaking of timing, this is also a good time to ask you guys to go ahead and like this video and also make sure to subscribe to the channel. I totally appreciate all you guys. And now let's go ahead and get back to the topic at hand. Now, while all of this chaos is happening, you gotta wonder, where's the president? His biggest rival for 2024 indicted for the third time, his son facing different allegations, a whistleblower confirming that he and Hunter had dinner meetings with powerful and rich individuals, yet where was President Biden? Well, he can't be bothered with all these little issues as he's a little busy with his vacation where he's already ridden his bike, eaten at a seafood restaurant, watched a movie, took a nice little stroll down Rail Booth Beach, which by the way is pretty close by his Delaware vacation home. So I guess the president has nothing to say about Trump's many legal issues, as well as his own sons that could very well be the playbook until next year. Hallie, the president is spending his evening uh, with dinner and a movie. He uh, just wrapped up dinner with the first lady at a local seafood restaurant and now he's at a movie theater watching Oppenheimer, of course, major motion picture uh, about the development of the first atomic bomb. Now, the White House, for its part, as well as the Biden campaign, is sticking closely to that no comment policy. They want to keep that firewall intact, making it clear that there has been no involvement on the part of the president and his team with the decisions, not just of the Justice Department, but a special prosecutor. Less talk less mistakes, right? However, he may need to speak up soon as I'm tying this part in with what we talked about in the beginning with Binomics. As it turns out, ratings agency Fitch seems to agree with some Americans who think that our economy stinks. And more than likely, this is why they downgraded the US economy's rating on US long-term debt from AAA to AA plus. Biden officials were quick to say that the company used a flawed methodology and ignored a strong and resilient economy. So basically they're correct because they're from the federal government and are also under President Biden. Everybody else is wrong because, well, refer to the first point of being under the president. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen pretty much condemned the new rating, even though Fitch cited that there has been a deterioration of our government over the past two decades, especially with debt limit political standoffs and last minute resolutions, which has ultimately led to confidence being lost in fiscal management. Wait, you mean the game that the government and lawmakers continue to play regarding our problems where they can't seem to get a decision quick enough and then by the 11th hour miraculously they just get together on a plan that everybody agrees on so you mean that trend hasn't helped boost confidence wow who would have known? I mean, they're doing the exact same thing to Social Security right now, so I guess we shouldn't be that surprised, right? But officials from the Biden administration did have an out. They know who they can blame for this downgrade. I'm gonna give you guys a couple seconds to just kind of guess. Three, two, Donald Trump. That's right, guys. The Biden administration is saying that the governance issues stem from the Trump era and that by Fitch's own measures, things have actually improved under President Biden. I guess the best person or group of people that I can ask already are right here in this community. Do you guys Think that our economy's troubles and the public's loss of trust in the government when it comes to fiscal management is rooted with former President Trump's time? Or is the Biden administration really to blame here? Make sure you guys let me know what you think in the comment section down below. By the way, if you own a home, make sure your home is protected. Get your free home warranty quote. There's a link in the description down below this video. And before I go, I just want to thank you all for just hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Thanks for letting me share the news and updates with you guys. If you made it this far, do like the video. Also consider subscribing to the channel and I'm going to catch you guys on the next one.